All right, so AWS, Amazon Web Services. These are services built by Amazon that help power applications on the web. Applications you're making on the internet. This means it's mostly for backend teams. And it's not just one service. There are hundreds of Amazon Web Services. And when you Google AWS, you'll come to a website similar to this one. It talks about credits and pricing, but what actually is it? If you sign in, you'll end up on a page like this one. And if you go to services, you can see all the things that Amazon offers, all the services they offer for web applications. Now, no one knows all of these services, unless it's your specialty, you work for Amazon, and you help people choose which services would best fit their needs. But there are definitely some that are more popular than others. You might use a handful of them in the day-to-day -day as a software engineer. Now the most popular Amazon Web Services, the most popular services they offer, are in the Compute, Database, and Networking sections. Compute is the bread and butter of AWS. This is what makes it the cloud. Each of these, EC2, Lambda, Elastic Beanstalk, they allow you to compute things in the Amazon cloud. And this idea of the cloud it just means you're using another machine to run your code or run your server, your program, your application. You're not doing it on the machine you own. You're renting a machine for the purpose of running your code or your server. Each of these offer different ways of running your code and configuring the machine it's running on. Then we have containers. This goes a little bit more into DevOps, which is a whole other field of technology but it's essentially a way to organize your code so it's easier to run on a remote machine. Amazon also offers services for different types of storage. So we have S3, Glacier. These are more long-term storage options. Think of these as Google Drive, but for your code. Then we have short-term storage. This has to do with databases. There's Redis, Elasticache, DocumentDB, DynamoDB. Lots of different options here. Each of these has pros and cons, but the important thing here is that Amazon offers you a place to run your code, but then also databases if that is required by your application. It makes it very much a plug and play type system versus having one technology that's running your code, another technology for your databases, another technology for your logging, another technology for your analytics. It can all be in one system with Amazon. And that's what makes up this whole Amazon Web Services platform. It's all these different services that help you build applications in the cloud, on the web, whatever you'd like. No one really called the cloud the cloud when Amazon Web Services first came about. That's why it's called Amazon Web Services versus Amazon Cloud Services, but the name stuck. There's also migration and transfer. I've never worked with these. Then you have networking and content delivery. This is one that often goes on behind the scenes. You don't really know you're using it, but you're using it by default. Any machine that runs has an IP address or an internet address. It's how you can identify the machine on the internet. Now, typically this is done by your internet provider, but because we're using remote machines in the cloud, we're renting them from Amazon in order to run our code. Amazon also has to give you an IP address for that machine. That's where this virtual private cloud or VPC comes in. When you use the services in the compute section, you automatically get this default VPC. It's already gonna have an IP address and that is determined by the VPC, the virtual private cloud. A lot of these different services have to do with network engineering and routing, route tables, all of that stuff, making sure connectivity exists between different resources. It's a lot of times something you use behind the scenes. Amazon also offers developer tools. These are things that make it easier to write your code and get it to those remote servers. Management and governance, this has a lot to do with logging or health alerts or if something goes wrong with your code, like making sure you get notified about it. 
That could be a system not running as expected. It could also be automating your infrastructure, whether that's auto scaling or feeding something a configuration file and it automatically builds out the infrastructure you need. That new infrastructure is something likely within the world of AWS. So it could be initializing a database or spitting up a new Lambda function or updating the Lambda function. Media services, never done anything there. Machine learning, haven't done anything there. I've heard of the analytics that Amazon offers. I haven't worked with it too much, but they also offer several services within the world of analytics. No matter what you're doing on the web, you're gonna have some type of security. Most of that is gonna live in IAM, which is identity and access management. So saying who gets access to what resources or what services you're using within Amazon Web Services. If you have application secrets or certain API keys or something like that, they have ways to store that and encrypt that on the service side. Of course, they have a whole bunch of services within the cost management section, so having a better idea of what you're spending with Amazon in order to build your web application. The front end section's very small. <laughs> there it is, it exists. But as a back end engineer, I don't use that. Haven't touched AR and VR in the world of Amazon. Application integration, this is a whole set of different services that do different things. SQS and SNS are the most popular. So the simple notification service and the simple queue service. If you have any type of functionality where you need to send a notification or you need to process things on a queue, these are great services to use. EventBridge, if you need something to happen every 24 hours or every seven days, or you need to trigger an event every so often, EventBridge is one way to do that. Have not used the business applications or the end user computing or the internet of things or game development. As a back-end software engineer, I've used probably 10 to 20 of these services in the day-to-day. -day. Not all at the same time, but over the course of five years or so. So those would be EC2, Lambda, ECS, Elastic Container Service, S3, Elasticache, DynamoDB, the VPC, Route 53, API Gateway, that kind of networking section, I've never used their development tools. Um, I've heard of them, but never used them. CloudWatch, auto scaling, cloud formation. Kinesis, I'm learning about now and using that now. IAM, Secrets Manager, Certificate Manager, the Key Management Service, WAF and Shield, the Cost Explorer. I don't, this is an Amazon Web Service, but I don't really count it. I've definitely looked at that one time to see how much we're spending. <laughs> and then EventBridge, SNS, and SQS. So even when someone says they've worked with AWS or Amazon Web Services, they've likely only worked with a handful of the services. You can't be an expert in all of these. But the point of AWS is to be a one-stop shop for anything you might need to build a web application. It's a platform, which makes it easy to integrate stuff or at least easier. It's easier to integrate a database with your application, or it's easier to write some code that sends a message to a queue or sends a notification to another service. Now there are companies that specialize in creating a competitor to just one Amazon web service, whether that's Datadog for analytics, Splunk for logging, or Jenkins for deployment pipelines. There are also other companies that try to recreate everything that Amazon is doing, that would be the Google Cloud Platform and Azure. Those are other options for your one-stop shop. Now, whether you choose AWS or Azure or Google Cloud, it's likely not even up to you. It's typically chosen by your team or by leadership or by the company you're working for. So if your team has decided to go with Amazon, you're in luck. This is the start of a series where I'll go through the most popular Amazon Web Services and talk about what they are, how they work, and how to create applications with them. So if you're interested in that, be sure to like and subscribe. All right, that's it for this video. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time. Happy coding.